HTML5 not only adds new tags such as header, footer and nav, it also increases the number of attributes that can be applied to elements. This is particularly true with regard to forms. Although Dreamweaver CS55 supports all the new tags and attributes, you need to look beyond the property inspector to access most of them. I've got open here a file that contains a simple form with a select menu and seven text input fields. If I select one of the input fields, you can see that in the property inspector only three types are listed. Single line, which is the same as type equals text. Multi-line, which actually converts it from an input tag into a text area tag. And password, which changes the type from text to password. And if we look at the forms category of the insert panel, you'll see that there's text field, hidden field, text area, checkbox, radio button, they're all the same things which were there in HTML4. There are none of the HTML5 input types. To gain access to the HTML5 input types, you need to open the Tag Inspector panel, which is not displayed by default in the Designer workspace. To open the Tag Inspector panel, go to Window and select Tag Inspector, and this opens the panel. The keyboard shortcut on Windows is F9, and on Mac it's Option-Shift-F9. The Tag Inspector is something rather like Dreamweaver's unloved child. Now it's time to dust it off and show it a bit of love and appreciation. First of all, let's close up the Insert panel so we can see the Tag Inspector panel better. At the top you've got two buttons, Attributes and Behaviours. The Behaviours button gives you access to snippets of JavaScript code, but most, but not all of them, are pretty antiquated and I'm not going to cover them in this course. Like the Property Inspector, the Tag Inspector panel is context-sensitive. The difference is that it exposes all attributes that can be applied to the current selection, not just a few of them. You can see at the moment that it detects that I'm inside a paragraph. If I select one of these text fields, it changes to Tag Input and it gives me access to each of the attributes that I can use. The type attribute is in the general category. So if I open this here, you can see we have type. It says text, but if I click in here, you can see that there is a full list of all the different types of attributes which are now available in HTML5. Button, checkbox, color, date, date time, date time, local. Although these date-related types look quite useful, the HTML5 specification says that the date format must be year, month, day. Now that's not very common in a lot of European and American countries, so I'm going to leave the type of this particular field as text rather than as date. What I'm going to do is to use a different attribute, which is called placeholder, and put in here mm slash dd slash Y, 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 Y. And if I now click on Live View, you'll see that in the text field it gives a little hint MMDD Y, Y, Y. And when you put your focus in the field, it disappears. So this acts as a hint to the user. Let's come out of Live View and you'll see that what's happened is that the Tag Inspector is now empty. The way to restore the values in the Tag Inspector is to just toggle these buttons here at the top. Let's look at some of the other useful attributes which are now available in HTML5. Here we have the required attribute, so if I click this and open that little menu and select Yes, and then go into Split View, you'll see that what has happened is that the required attribute has been inserted into the HTML. And here we have the placeholder attribute with the value which we inserted in the Tag Inspector. Older browsers that don't recognize these new attributes simply ignore them, rendering the form exactly the same as they did before. But modern browsers which recognize them will use the required attribute to make sure that there is some content in the field before the form is submitted and the placeholder will show a little hint for the user. Let's change the type of the Adults Input field to Number. And when you've changed it to Number, you can also put in Max, 
which is the maximum number that you want to allow users to insert, and min for the minimum number which users can insert. And you can also add the required attribute to the same field. So the Tag Inspector panel becomes extremely important when you're working with HTML5 forms. I've got an example of this form to which I've added several other new HTML5 attributes and let's have a look at it in a modern browser like Chrome. As you can see, in the Arrival and Departure fields we've got the placeholder text. As soon as you put your cursor in there, the focus in there, it disappears. But if you don't put anything in the field, the placeholder returns. But let's see what happens if I put in a date. Move to the next field, you see the date remains there, the placeholder has now disappeared. And in the adults field we have a number stepper, so if I click here it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, but it won't go any further because I set the max at 4. Now if I try to submit this incomplete form, let's see what happens. Because that field was required, this HTML5 compliant browser refuses to submit the form until that field is filled in. What's more, your form remains perfectly functional in older browsers, so it's perfectly safe to use these HTML5 features now. Your key to working with these features is the Tag Inspector. The disadvantage of the Tag Inspector is that it gives you access to many attributes that you're unlikely to ever need, which makes finding the ones that you want more difficult. But it's an extremely useful panel, and one that I'll be referring to frequently in this course.